Howdy, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Palmisano here again for another reaction lesson tutorial thing. I'm on my website, and as you can see on the dashboard, it not only has your, your uh, recent micro lesson, recent course, and what's happening, but also your recent video activity for people that uh, do the reacts requests. And I've been watching Billy Strings do the dead thing uh, streams the past few nights. And uh, C. Garvey comes in as a lifetime member. Thank you so much for that tremendous support. You guys make the world turn. Uh, he comes in with Don't Think Twice. And he goes, Billy doing the Dylan thing. How's he do this, Michael? Well, let's give it a gander. Let's bring it up full screen. And thank you, Chuck, for being a lifetime member. I sincerely appreciate you. You know that. If you're, from, if you're uh, unfamiliar with this channel, this isn't a typical React channel. Uh, this is as if you were to bring uh, something into your guitar teacher and say, hey, how do I play this? So we try to get the broad strokes, what makes the song, what it is, and some key takeaways for you to practice playing it. So let's watch Billy uh, do the old Dylan tune. Now he's got the, he's got the thumb pick and then the finger pick. So I don't have that, uh, Chuck, so uh, I'm gonna have to figure out a different way of doing it. I see capo five. Let's listen for a minute. Well, there ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe If you don't know by now And there ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe It don't matter anyhow When the rooster crows at the break of dawn Look out your window and I'll be gone You're the reason I'm a-traveling on Don't think twice, it's yeah. all right You know, you guys that have been watching me a while know that I'm a huge Doc Watson fan. And I know that Billy is too. And watching somebody, you know, combine that Doc style uh, picking, but not the flat picking, but, you know, Doc used to do it with just his thumb and his first finger. Uh, but, like, combine that style of playing and getting the melodic parts on top uh, to an old classic song like this and... and with with you know all the different arrangements in here and getting the melodies just makes me I just I just love this. Let's figure out what's going on here. Let's do the capo. Let's see if we're in the same exact you know. Yep. So I'm capo fifth fret here, coming in to a C shape. So we are in the key of what sounds like F major, but this is your C pattern one shape for all you caged people out there. All right, so we got to walk up. Walk up right from the five. So this is from a turnaround, if you will, bluegrass turnaround. Five, six, seven, one, and it comes right in on that C major chord with the, with the pinky down, so fifth up top. I can't do, <laughs> I can't do all the things he's doing. But again, your broad strokes here. C, then you walk down. Or maybe he does it like this. What does he do here? Yeah. 
So C, one, E7. So you got the pinky moves over to the second string to get that flat seven of uh, your E7 shape. Again, sound of A7. So that is a dominant three chord, which is functioning to your A minor shape, which of course is the sound of D minor, right? And it all has that walk down of, so root of your one, fifth of your, of your dominant three chord, which functions to your root of your six minor chord. And then over to your five, you have your G, your four, your F. Uh. Always with that fifth to major third on your one. Then over to G, and you're making it dominant, right? Flat seven to six. And then you start alternating fifth root. So you got. That's it. Been a minute. Been a minute. Well, there ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. And now this time, he doesn't do that dominant three. He does this walk down. Now what this is, is this is a five chord first inversion. You can look at it as G over B shape with the B in the bass to get that walk down. And still, again, I'm talking shapes. Uh, and harmonically speaking, this is C over E, right? Because C is your five of F, which is our enharmonic, enharmonically correct tonic. Right? Right to your six. Well, there ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. If you don't know by now. Yeah, I love this. Now, now we're going to our D7 over F sharp, our D7 first inversion shape, right? When you walk down to it, uh, walk down straight to the root. I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. Now what this is actually is G7 over B, right? So this is a functioning secondary dominant to matter anyhow to G7. Yeah. And then he adds the flat seven in, right? To make that function back to C. So the B note in your G7, right? That is your leading tone to C. So this pulls to pulls to a functioning secondary dominant or functioning dominant in general is when you have that five to one cadence. And what makes that is that third resolving up to the fourth and also that, that seventh going down. When the rooster crows at the break of dawn, look out your window and I'll be gone. You're the reason I'm a traveling on. Twice, it's all right. Yeah, dude, ah, oh, he's so good. Now so check out what happens here. When the rooster crows at the break of dawn. So this, what you have is you have a one, somebody alternating the bass. Dominant one, so C shape, again, sounds of F, right? Root, fifth, add in the flat seven. Then it goes to F, Look out your functioning. So you're making the C shape a seventh. So now it's a functioning dominant, right? 
to F. C to F is five to one. C seven to F. And then that D over F sharp again. So you got, that's it. Right? And where do you think this goes to? This functions to, again, leading tone. Oh, it didn't go there, it just implied it. Yeah. Don't think twice, it's all right. So it saves it. So good. Yeah. See, it shows you how out of, out of shape I am here. Twice, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you got, you got, uh, in the bass. That walk for five, six, seven, one, and then you got same thing in the treble, right? But he's just so sharp with it. Yeah, that that that. Uh, Yeah, that, that, that. Yeah, okay, there it is. And then just like the beginning, here's the turnaround for the whole thing. And the giveaway here is to the this B note, again, and harmonically E, is now the fifth, the fifth of your dominant three chord instead of the third of your five chord. And that is the turnaround. This part at 106 is where the song starts. That's your whole form. So good. Like you've never done before. Ain't no use in turning on your light, babe. I can't hear you anymore. I'm wishing there was something that you could do or say to try to make me change my mind and stay. We never did too much talking anyway. Don't think twice, it's all right. That part right there was really spectacular. So he's taking a lead, right, while doing the chords over this, I guess you call it this bridge section where it's the C, C7, right, F, like that, that part. But watch his body language, watch his head. Like you're watching me do it and I'm like, okay, I gotta figure this out, I'm like nuts and bolts. He's done the work, he's put in the hours. Right, he's clearly, look, my seat's falling down. There we go. He's woodshedded this thing, right? So 
He's got it internalized. And so what does that mean? When you're watching him do this, this is a pure, relaxed expression. You see him doing the big pocket sway with his head. So the intricacies, right? The little things that are happening, all the little pieces which he's nailing, those are like little rhythmic parts, little rhythmic gears to the big machine. And he's, he's putting out the feel and the sound of the whole piece. And his hands are just making all the little things add up. It's, it's, it's really hard to do right. You really have to put in this time. I mean, I'm clearly not doing it justice, but just watch his body language. Just watch it, right? He's learned it, and he's forgotten it, and now he's breathing it. It is the goal of every performance, of every performer. Masterful. You guys know I'm a huge Billy Strings fan. You know I'm a huge Doc Watson fan. I don't even have to say anything about the Dylan tune. Perfect. Love the arrangement. Uh, love all the voice leading. Love that he took a melodic solo part while keeping the rhythm down. I've never learned to be able to do the proper uh, thumb pick and the two metal fingers thing. I kind of do it with the like a hybrid slap thing that I kind of came up with it. Obviously, I haven't put in <laughs> the time to do this like Billy has, um, but it's just it's just incredible to watch. And and the key takeaway for this is that the song shines through. He's learned it. He's figured out what he's going to do with it. He believes it, and he can just breathe it out in one take. Uh, Billy, you know I love you. Uh, you're incredible. Uh, love that you're honoring this tune. Love that you got me into a little pick and flick today. Anytime to get back on acoustic is a good day. That's it. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Chuck, for recommending this video. And thanks to all of you out there who uh, took the extra step to subscribe on the website. It supports everything that you see here free on YouTube and uh, literally makes all of this possible. If any of you are interested in joining, the link is the first one in the description. You get all my lessons, courses, and of course, like Chuck, you get primary react requests. I try to do a couple of them a week. That's it. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. Cheers.
Practice. Practice, Michael.